wonderful. Are you ready, babe? Me too. Here we go. Listen, the name of this song is Happy. We all know that organizations need to innovate to survive, yet finding the intellectual brain power. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a bit more quiet for those who listen. Please get seated, stay in here. All right. We all know that organizations need to innovate to survive, um, yet finding the intellectual brain power is sometimes the toughest part. Our next keynote speaker is connecting the dots between needs for innovation and resourceful talent. Please welcome on stage professor and former dean of the LIU Brooklyn School of Business for Public Administration and Information Science, Edward Rogoff. Welcome on stage. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's talk about how two needs married together can create a solution for both. Specifically, I believe there's a nexus between the corporate need for innovation and growth and the need to manage the retirement of older employees so that they remain productive and engaged while also reducing the burden on society's social support systems. Let's look at the numbers. The European Commission projects that in the next 50 years, and assuming a retirement age of 65, Europe will see a workforce decline of 10 million, while the population of people over 65 will increase by 20 million. This means that organizations will be increasingly competing for workers, while society will be bearing rising costs of retired employees. The research firm CB Insights recently surveyed 677 companies, 37% of which are in Europe, and found that 85% of them believe that innovation, thank you, is important for their continued success, while 41% feel that they are at risk of being significantly hurt by disruptive changes in their industries. I believe that marrying these two problems of increasing retirements and the need for innovation can lead to a solution for both. While the numbers may look ominous, in fact, the world has changed for seniors, and they are, in fact, changing the world. Today, 50-plus-year-olds who have been given the gift of 20 to 30 years of longevity and good health are creating businesses on their own. From micro ventures such as selling antique toys to multi million dollar technology startups. Senior entrepreneurs have years of experience to draw upon, including corporate work and managing family businesses, and they are in general eager to embrace new opportunities. Rather than retirement, many are choosing encore careers as entrepreneurs. In 1955, a 54-year-old milkshake mixer salesman saw what he thought was the most innovative startup in the restaurant industry. Because he had spent more than 20 years in the food industry, he recognized broad public appeal combined with efficiency and low prices. A year later, he bought this burger stand business from the brothers who founded it. The salesman's name is Ray Kroc. And over the next 30 years, he built that one stand into the fast food giant McDonald's. What is often omitted from Kroc's story is that if he had been 20 or 30 years younger with less experience, he never would have been able to spot the great opportunity that that hamburger stand represented. In the 60 years since Ray Kroc became an entrepreneur, the world has changed for older populations. People have been given longevity and health, 
and many of the world's 1.2 billion people over the age of 55 are using this additional time to become entrepreneurs. This is good news for the world's economies because businesses started by older entrepreneurs are more successful than ones started by younger ones. More than twice as many ventures founded by seniors last three years or longer as compared to businesses started by younger entrepreneurs. Senior entrepreneurship has two significant economic impacts. First, there's evidence that older people who remain engaged in life stay healthier, and second, they make fewer demands on the social safety service net and entitlement program. In addition, these seniors continue to work and pay taxes, perhaps most importantly because new businesses create jobs. Rather than taking jobs away from younger generation members, senior entrepreneurs are creating positions as they build their businesses. A recent report that I co-authored from the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor on Senior Entrepreneurship shows that globally, seniors are as likely as middle-aged people to be entrepreneurs and more likely than any other group to be social entrepreneurs. In Australia, the US, and the EU, which comprise the countries that have been most studied on this, on this issue, age and entrepreneurship are positively correlated. In fact, half the businesses in the US are owned by people over 50, and the statistics indicate that older entrepreneurs start larger businesses and, as I said, are most likely to endure. The evidence is clear that entrepreneurship among older populations is a major phenomenon, and the opportunity for older aspiring entrepreneurs is growing. Consider the following. First, entrepreneurship has lost the stigma it once had. There was a time when employment and a long career with a single large prestigious company was seen as the most desirable professional path. Today, becoming an entrepreneur is often the first choice, even late in a person's career. Second, technology has made business ownership more accessible. Until recently, the first steps in opening a business were renting an office and hiring a staff. <clears throat> Working from home was regarded as unacceptable, and being a solo flyer was something that was limited to hermits. Computers, cell phones, telephone answering systems, word processing software, and of course the internet have made small business startups and operations easier and cheaper. Third, the internet has leveled the playing field for small businesses. Websites make it easier for small businesses to appear big and service their customers anywhere in the world. Companies such as eBay and Amazon provide the structure for individuals and small businesses to reach their markets and lower barriers for small business operations. With more than 168 million active users, eBay is helping millions of people of all ages become entrepreneurs buying and selling products. Fourth, knowledge-based businesses are growing. Later life entrepreneurs have skills, experience, education that represent valuable commodities. Outsourcing, once considered a bad word, is now recognized as a tool for efficiency. One of the fundamental lessons that we have learned from the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor studies is that there are two basic types of entrepreneurs. First, there are necessity-driven entrepreneurs. These are people who believe they have to be entrepreneurs because they have no employment options. And second, there are opportunity-driven entrepreneurs who choose entrepreneurship because they want to be business owners. We see that opportunity-driven entrepreneurs are more successful because <clears throat> of the assets that they bring to the venture in the form of human and financial capital. These are people are disproportionately older. Marrying the abilities of older workers who want to be successful entrepreneurs with the needs of corporations that want to maintain growth and be innovative 
can lead to a long-lasting and mutually beneficial arrangement for both groups. Let's take a look at the specific strengths that older employees have uh, that can help current employers. Older workers have deep knowledge of their fields, their industries, and their companies. Older workers have large networks within their organizations and their industries. And more importantly, they have the wisdom gained from their long-term experience, which improves the probability of success for new ventures and initiatives they may start. These strengths translate into opportunities for the organizations that can take the form of both intrapreneurship and entrepreneurship. Intrapreneurship means new ventures and initiatives within the organization. Entrepreneurship means new independent or somewhat independent ventures outside of the corporation or institution that have spawned them. In today's rapidly changing environment, all organizations need to adapt and create growth. Developing structures to use highly experienced and knowledgeable employees, meaning older workers, to build these new initiatives is a way to create growth when these workers would normally be moving out of the organization and their talents would otherwise be lost. From the employee's point of view, this is not just a humane way to transition out, but in fact, a thrilling way to start a new career. How can corporations take advantage of this landscape for senior entrepreneurship and meet their needs for growth? Helping on older entrepreneurs, holding, helping older workers transition to an entrepreneurial retirement can be done in several ways. Solicit ideas from new, for new outside ventures or inside initiatives from the workforce as individuals begin to approach retirement age. These ideas could provide ways to open new markets for the company's existing products or services, or they might create new technologies and systems that increase efficiency and reduce cost in existing systems. Other concepts might unlock economic potential for company-owned but unused intellectual property. Some good ideas may have economic potential and might represent a departure from the company's business. In other words, for that company, they may be the next big thing. Yet other ideas may be socially-minded ventures that can bring positive attention to the company. Whatever their focus, retiring employees have the potential to create significant growth. These ventures could be structured as independent entities that a company invests in or as units within the company itself. Retired entrepreneurial employees could report to a board comprised of people with entrepreneurial experience and expertise or to relevant unit heads within the company or directly to the CEO. In fact, <clears throat> the CB Insights research shows that overwhelmingly CEOs don't delegate innovation strategies to others. Some companies such as American Express and Capital One and others have established their own accelerators which function as venture farms, new venture farms for businesses that the company is supporting. Remember too that entrepreneurship is a team sport. Building successful venture teams may mean matching up small groups of retiring employees or mixing and matching them with current younger employees. It is then the company's responsibility to give the retired employee's venture the support it needs, such as financing, mentoring, technical help. Depending on the venture's product, the parent company may even become the venture's first customer. Be sure to create an exit strategy. Like any entrepreneurial venture, early planning has to include thoughts about an exit plan. This might be a plan to sell the venture after it reaches a certain size, to integrate it into the parent company, or to maintain it as a separately operated but corporately owned business. Some societal efforts have begun to encourage and support senior entrepreneurship, which could include low cost and even free resources to corporate sponsored entrepreneurial ventures. 
The European Union was one of the first governmental organizations to create policy initiatives aimed at stimulating entrepreneurship among older workers. It has created an infrastructure for public-private investments, education and training programs, policy and research to support enterprise, which it has identified in its 2020 strategic plan as being key to economic growth. Most business schools place entrepreneurship front and center in their curriculum and appreciate partnering with the private sector. Many countries and local governments are also willing to be supportive of a new venture uh, creation program. So now is the time to start the initiative of turning retired or soon to be retired employees into the major assets they truly are. Thank you for your time. I want to tell you something. All of you that's out there been having fun with me, we're going to do it again. Listen. Thank you very much. Are you ready? Thank you. Edward, thanks a lot. Jump